What is going on? It is Tribal Zedmont, and we're here to talk about some tribal areas. Last night, I had a little bit of ridiculousness going on, partially because there were some bugs, and partially because it was so fresh and new that I hadn't had time to think about it or di digest or anything like that. So I slept on it last night, gave it some thought, uh, got a couple hours anyways. And here's what we're going to get into. First of all, um, the NPC clearing thing I was really excited about, but now I'm a little bit nervous or a little bit I'm, I'm a little bit lukewarm on it. And the reason for that is if you look at the help file, which I probably should have done earlier on, first off, um, you'll notice that it says power stone chances do not affect the amount of fragments you get. So that's a bit of a womp womp. And then moving up a little bit, you'll notice that it says if you decide to use this feature, um, it'll be the resources will be lower than if you do it yourself and they will only be able to salvage fragments. So that means that number one, you'll be getting less resources and number two, you'll have fewer crystals. You'll have, you'll have less powder. You'll have, and I, I am always terrible at less and fewer. I'm, I'm not, I'm not good at that. Um, but grammar aside, what I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on one region. I'm going to upgrade the ice guard tribe first of all and the reason for that is that I don't care if you look at my sculptor here I don't care if I miss out on a few ice frags or a few ice shards or a few ice crystals even because I've already got like 250 hours of uh, sculptor work ahead of me in that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this one specific region I'm gonna upgrade it to hundred percent I think you can get to hundred percent um, level four will give 80 level five will give 100 maybe maybe it'll get only down up to 90 i'm not entirely sure but what i'd like to see here is i'd like to see one specific base now if you're an attacker maybe you uh, do the bottom two here to get heavy and rifleman damage depending on which troops you use maybe you do the ones in the left i'm going to avoid bases that have volcanoes in them because i want the red shards uh, I don't really care about the green shards, but the green shards tend to be intermixed with reds. So have a look on your bases and see what sort of uh, rewards you are. Like uh, Pink Titan over here is probably going to give reds. Yeah, so uh, that's why I don't want to do that region. You might want to do resource production and gold just because uh, the more resources you get, the faster you'll be able to do crystal mining. I don't really know, but just give it some thought. See which ones or two you want to do. I would highly recommend sticking to one or two. If you go to more than that, you're not going to be able to max them. My, my thinking is get them to max as soon as possible and then move on to the next one. I don't really care about the bonuses at this point. Maybe you do though. I mean, this is just my way of thinking. I'm I'm going to ignore the bonuses and go more for the ability to clear and get a hundred percent or close to a hundred percent because I don't often clear NPCs. So, but for now, if you have a look at my attacks here, I have been clearing NPC with troops. I'm going to continue to do that until I get something close to a hundred percent. A little bit annoying, but nonetheless, not a big deal. Now, one of the things to be aware of is as soon as they brought in this update people have they now have the ability to um clear their map very easily very easily and very quickly now that is a concern for me because if you look at the top task forces a good reason why some of these task forces are way way up high is that they have like six accounts per person and they can easily jump in and drop intel and this just got way easier so i feel like getting on these leaderboards is going to get harder getting on these leaderboards as an independent team who doesn't have a, a coalition behind them dropping intel is going to get really hard because these top teams have a whole bunch of accounts and a whole bunch of people and you no longer have to do anything you can just jump in and um clear all the npcs and get all the intel for that so those top leaderboard spots are going to be harder to get to and uh, for our team we don't we tend to struggle with intel a little bit and so we can kiss our spot on the leaderboard or close to the leaderboard goodbye uh Again, that's just my initial impressions. I might be wrong, but I and I hope I'm wrong, but I think that that's not the case. Okay, I mean, I know I already know of two abandoned accounts from people that I know, and I'm going to be asking them if they want to just jump in and clear NPCs because that would be very, very useful for us.
Now, third, they talked about how you had to have radar level 20 to get access to these regions. And, but I think what they meant was you have to be at radar level 20 to get all of the regions. So what I'm going to show you now is on my HQ18 account, look at that. I actually have access to two of the regions. Now, this is a maxed radar level 18. I've cleared all the possible regions and I now have access to two of them. So handy for me. I tried to find something on my HQ16 account. It doesn't have access to any regions, no reference to this information whatsoever. If you have uh, radar level 19, please let me know how many regions you have because I feel like you're going to have more than me. Maybe two, maybe four, maybe five. I don't know. But I'm pretty excited about this, the fact that I get to play at least with my HQ level 18 account. That will be very handy, and it'll make it easy because I only have two regions to up update, so I'll be able to max them pretty quickly, I feel like. So I think that's it. Um, there are a couple bugs out there to be aware of. Um, let me just check. I've got a list of them here, thanks to the wonderful folks on Discord. Let's get to the bugs. So, number one, where are they? Number one, Brick still doesn't follow Flare or Flag. Little bit of a pain. Eversparks, a passive ability, as we talked about last night, is not up to snuff. Let's show you here. If we walk back and forth with Everspark, my Everspark is maxed and she does not drop. Let's get rid of you and you, because we probably don't want to show. Um, go away. There we go. So she still drops critters every like six seconds. It's definitely not every 4.3. It's more like 6.5 or something like that. So that might just be partially because of the animation that maybe it'll be fixed. I don't know, but it seems like a bug to me. A lot of people definitely agree. And if you're on Android, have a look at your operation bases. They are fuzzy and the beaches are a little bit weird. Um, the UR animations have been have added a slight delay, so I'll show you my attacks here. I've been testing. I feel like the double tap still works. I'm not 100% sure though. We'll have to try it on War Factory later today and definitely on Operation Attacks. The Kamikaze double tap appears to still work, but the animation slows it down just a touch, so it's going to be hit or miss. We will find out for sure. Now, um, what else is there? Yeah, oh, well, that's one more thing. Crystal critters are not indestructible. They have been being destroyed. They talked about it in the dev update and in the um, game news. They said they're going to be indestructible, but they are not. So let's go like this. I'm going to put Mr. Kevin Kavon underneath smoke here. And we'll push this button. And you'll notice his actually do work underneath smoke. Uh, how can I get them close though? Let's get up to here. Oh, I can't even flare him up. Let's let's go like this. Healer, medic, forgot about that part. Kind of need someone to heal. So let's go like this. Try that one more time. We're going to walk Kevin Kavon up to here. And then I will smoke him and smoke him. And let's see if we can get him to drop them outside of the smoke. Nope, can't. There we go. Come on, get outside the smoke, please. Okay, let's go like this then. I guess we don't really care if Kevin Kavon dies, but let's see here. Look at that. The critters are dying. They have health. They have. They said all along that the critters were going to be indestructible, but clearly they have health and they are clearly destructible. So definitely some things that need to be fixed. Um, and... If you use the destroy feature in the game here to get your um, to get your NPCs, you won't see the you won't see your victory points added right away. But if you close the game and come back, they will be there. So that's all I've got so far. A um, little bit of concern for the leaderboards. Um, a, a little bit of a focus on which bases you want to go for. Um, some bugs, but overall, oh, that's one more thing. Last right, last thing. This is my last thing. Um, there's already some discussion about the uh, endless reserves. Now, I love this feature. For me personally, this feature is amazing. This will save me a lot of actual real life dollars because I was using a ton of diamonds to gem my troops and now I have to use way, 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 way less. So now there's been a bunch of discussions on Reddit and on the forums, but someone named Mass Wasnos had the best comment and I'll read it for you. He says, as far as I'm concerned, or she says, as far as I'm concerned, it was already in the game because you could just use diamonds to do it. Now it's much cheaper and is it accessible to a lot more people. So 
I would agree with that. People who were on the leaderboards or um, want were, were diamond spenders were going to use it anyways. They, I was already going to diamond my troops, so by me doing this, I'm not going to get any sort of advantage. I'm gonna. I was gonna diamond my troops anyways. Now it's just saving me some money. And people who would never diamond their troops, maybe, maybe, maybe they will buy the endless reserves subscription. It might be an ex. Obviously, they've said that the people who are going to add the endless reserves are worth more money than people like me who are already spending diamonds. So, hoping um, uh, they're hoping to get a revenue stream. Good for them. I am definitely open to. Um, other opinions. I'm, I've only read about five or six opinions. I've thought about it myself a little bit, but I am definitely biased. I'm very excited about this. So if you feel like this is going to hurt you, um, please let me know. But uh, first of all, look how many resources I have, like none. For those of you who are not max 65s, this raw crystal mine might be the bane of your existence because people are going to be pumping their... Re like, people are going to be building their buildings and pumping their leftover resources into here. But once they get a little bit higher, they get a little bit more expensive. So that might offset. Um, I have, I'm already back into a gold. I have no gold whatsoever. Part of that is because of the warriors where warriors were like 10 times more than they were supposed to be. And part of that is because I didn't realize that NPCs were only giving partial rewards. So too early to tell as far as rewards, but... Let me know what you think. I just wanted to get this out there quickly. There are many, many things going on, and I wanted to keep this as short and brief as I could. Please let me know in the comments what you think, and what you are excited about, and what you are sad about, and all of those sort of things. Thank you very much for coming in. This has been Zedmot. Please stay tuned. I will be releasing more once I can do some more research and reading and all those sorts of things. Okay, thanks for coming in. Peace!